Okay, Jim, you're on. Hi, it's a uh, Jim Joy guy, and we want to welcome you all to our Discovery Toys guest speaker series. And today we are very honored to be joined by Shannon Penrod. And Shannon is the host of Autism Live. And uh, I first met uh, Shannon when I was invited on her web show to review some selected Discovery Toys products uh, a few months back. Um, and, and that was a lot of fun and uh, uh, hopefully very insightful if you had a chance to see that, that particular segment. Um, Shannon is also, she's aired a podcast called Everyday Autism Miracles. And she is an award-winning writer, a stand-up comedian, and director. And I even discovered that she even worked as an assistant professor at the State University of New York in Brigham Young. Quite a resume. Now, today, Shannon wears many hats as a mother, an author, speaker, coach, educator, filmmaker, and autism advocate. Wow, my head's spinning just reading that list. Uh, but she's always able to to keep it real, and uh, it's always a joy to um, share some time and some insights from Shannon. So, Shannon, without further ado. Thank you so much. I'm so honored to be here with all of you, and uh, boy, that, made, that introduction made my head spin. Uh, <laughs> I think what it means is that I've been on the planet a long time, <laughs> and uh, done a lot of things, and been very fortunate to do a lot of things. Uh, what I want to be even more specific that not only am I a mom, I'm a mom of a young man who was diagnosed with autism when he was two and a half. And he's 15 and a half now, and I couldn't be prouder of him. Um, and that sort of changed my journey along the way. Uh, but always before being a mom, and certainly before being an autism mom, I was also a person who loved toys. Uh, I think that they're one of the greatest joys in the world and being able to play with a good toy with a child is, well, first of all, being a child and being able to play with a good toy is one of the great things in life, right? We can all remember being able to play with a toy and our favorite toy, right? But being a parent and having the opportunity to connect with your child around a toy is something that we all dream about, right? And certainly that's not different for autism parents. So I, we know that this is a growing pop population, so I'm really thrilled to have an opportunity to talk with you guys uh, a, a little bit about what kind of toys make me jazzed as an autism mom, what I hear from autism parents, what I hear from autism therapists, and why we were so particularly excited about a bunch of your toys and chose them for a toy guide that we did last year. So that's kind of what we're going to be talking about and feel free to ask questions along the way. Um, I, you know, I, autism is sort of my thing now. So I, I'm, I'm going to be talking about toys and I'm going to talk about it through the guise of autism. Um, but I don't think it's that different than people who are what we call neurotypical. But um, you are going to see that more and more people are going to be asking you questions about autism and toys related to autism. So I thought it would be interesting to just start with a little definition of what autism is in case there's anybody on this call that isn't familiar with it. It's a growing segment of our population. They estimate that 2% of our current population is somewhere on the autism spectrum. And it is a spectrum. It means that a person can... Uh, be profoundly affected and need a great deal of support, or a person can be a little affected, need a little bit of support. And there are people among you that you may not even realize have an autism spectrum diagnosis that are sitting next to you. Uh, there was just a huge report yesterday about um, Amy Schumer uh, identifying, she just got married and she has a baby on the way and she came forth and there's all these news reports today saying that her husband happens to be on the autism spectrum. So you're going to be hearing more about this, seeing more about it. It is a developmental disorder. It's considered a neurodevelopmental disorder. And there are some hallmarks to autism, that it is marked by having a, a deficit in social skills and a deficit in communication. So um, we also see that there is... Uh, a propensity to have repetitive behaviors. 
that sometimes uh, they will line toys up, for instance, but there are myriads of examples of this where they'll get stuck into a repetitive behavior. Sometimes that ends up being a plus. Uh, when you think about it, some of the people that we have in different high level jobs who are able to see things and see patterns, what an incredible thing. But for others, it can be something that can really be disabling. So that's autism in a nutshell. Uh, but you know, there is a saying that says, if you've met one person with autism, you have met one person with autism. Everybody is different. Uh, just like you and I, we are all completely different and we might have some similarities. So it's important, I think, not to pigeonhole autism. But um, one of the reasons why I got so excited about your toys is that um, there is this thing called ABA therapy for autism. ABA stands for Applied Behavior Analysis. It's a science that's been around for a really long time, um, but it very recently, starting in 1987, was found to be very effective in treating autism. It is a science-based um, study. It is now funded by insurance. Um, it helps to build skills in children. It is amazing, can I say, um, and something that I get really excited about. It usually um, is done very intensively. That if for a three-year-old child, the prescription might be 40 hours a week of working one-on-one -on -one with therapists. But here's the big news that I want you guys to know is that it involves play. Uh, that it's one of the things that they work on with a child is play and, and, and having the right toys can really supercharge ABA therapy. This picture here is my son. This is him when he was seven, right about when he was finishing his ABA therapy. Uh, it's one of my favorite pictures because he's got his arms up the air and he's, he's looking right at the camera, which there was a time when that was not a possibility. But this uh, little boy had had 40 hours of therapy when he was three years old. And um, when he was first diagnosed with autism, he was a child who let me, let me go back a little bit. Um, he was progressing normally as a child, um, speaking early, made great eye contact, was very social. And then my son had regressive autism, so we lost him a little bit at a time. Um, that he would have a skill that he could do and then the next day he wouldn't be able to do it. And over time, he lost his ability to communicate. He didn't respond when you called his name. He couldn't speak. Um, we really truly lost him. He was self injurious. He was a kid who would throw himself on the floor and, and bang his head on the floor. Um, it was a very frightening time for me as a parent, but we started with ABA therapy and um, we got our child back. My son is 15 now and he speaks and you could meet him and uh, potentially not know, you would just think he was funny and maybe a little quirky. He's one of those kids, right? He's 15 and a half at a college prep high school with no supports whatsoever. And he, uh, you know, he's on his competitive robotics team. Um, he's a very fun, fun kid. Um, we got the right amount of therapy at the right time and we had great therapists that understood the power of play. They worked on a lot of things with my son and they taught him a lot of things and they taught him how to learn and they use toys and they use some of the things that you guys sell. Uh, some of the things that you have sort of supercharged that I picked for our catalog. So I want you to know that uh, this is a very important area for me. Uh, it's one of the reasons why I do what I do. Um, I will tell you that on the show, Autism Live, which I'm going to talk about in a second, we feature toys every holiday season. We review them. We look at hundreds of toys. Um, we, we look at them from lots of different points of view, from the point of view of a therapist, a parent, a child, um, to see what really will do the most to help a child to learn and grow and build skills, but to help them to have fun, because fun is an important part of everything. One of the things, though, that we do is that we filter ways to use the toy through something called skills. Skills is a curriculum for um, autism. 
and it has lessons in eight different curricula areas. And you'll notice I listed them here for you, things like academic, cognitive, executive functions, social, motor, language, adaptive, and play. But the interesting thing as we talk about toys is that a good toy can not only help a child to work on play and all the skills that are involved to play, but a good toy can also work on social skills and a good toy can also work on cognitive skills and executive functions and all of these different things on the list. Um, so you'll hear me referring to skills and this is what I'm talking about. Um, it is something that's available online and a lot of ABA providers use it and even some parents use it because um, it's very comprehensive. Okay, so what do I look for when I'm looking for toys? As an autism parent, you know, I, I mean, as a parent, you want to buy toys for your child that light them up. But I remember when my son was diagnosed with autism and, and everything I would hear from other parents is don't go buy any toys yet because your therapists are going to want some very specific kinds of toys. And so don't buy anything yet. And he was about to turn three. And um, I knew that financially we were going to have a lot of concerns with autism and that we were in for a little bit of a, a long haul. My, my son did five years of intensive therapy before he graduated. So um, I wanted to be cost effective. I wanted uh, a toy to build skills and, and be fun. So take a look at some of the things on my list as I'm looking at toys to recommend to other parents. I wanna know that it's very adaptive and flexible because I wanna be able to use this toy for a lot of different things. We see that kids with autism, there are lessons that they need to learn, and then the lesson has to progress and evolve. And I want a toy to be able to be multifunctional and take a child through a longer period because I get more for my money, right? Um, I, I look at the toy and I go, how many different things can I teach? And I'm really thinking about that skills program and thinking, how many lessons and skills will this toy be adaptable to? Um, is it visually stimulating? I, is it something um, that, a, that a child or a baby or a teenager is going to want to pick up and look at? Because that's a really important thing. Does it have adjustable sound? If it's something that makes a repetitive sound, I need to be able to turn it down because of sensory issues. are very prevalent on the autism spectrum. Um, I want to know and this one should be in bigger letters, but how fun is it? If it's not fun, it could be the most educational toy in the world. But if it's not fun, we know that the kids aren't going to play with it. But as a parent, I also worry about, is this a toy that will make me crazy? Uh, <laughs> you know, parents are crazy enough and we're tired enough. And if it's something that's got uh, something repetitive or that is... Uh, has the potential to hurt my child or somebody else, it's gonna make me crazy. But also as an autism parent, I'm looking for, is there a social component to this toy? Is there some an opportunity for this to be some sort of give and take? How easy is it to store is super important to me because I, when you're dealing with a child with autism, you've got people coming in and out. One therapist comes in and is working on toys. Is it easy to pack away in the box? Are the pieces gonna get lost? I care about how does it feel? Tactile, is it, is it something that feels good in my hands? Is it smooth? Is it bumpy? Is it fun? Is there something about it that's really cool? And then of course, because I gotta watch my price point dollars and figure out where I'm spending my budget, is it something that's gonna last? Uh, is it gonna break after the first go through? Because sometimes kids on the autism spectrum can be a little rough on toys. So these are some of the things that I look for in toys. Um, now I mentioned, uh, I, I host the show uh, Autism Live, and it's a show where we try to look at autism in all the different ways that there are. So we don't just deal with small children. We are talking about how autism affects teenagers, how it affects adults, how it affects the whole family, how a family can afford to pay for the things that they have to do. We really try to look at everything, a 360 degree perspective. So of course, part of that is being a kid and playing with toys. Uh, we started doing the Festival of Toys eight years ago, and then as the years progressed, it kind of got bigger and bigger, and um, 
two years ago, we started putting out a guide because everybody said, you know, I need to find this in a list. I got to have it someplace. We put out a guide last two years ago and um, it, it just happened to coincide with a period in time in which a big toy store that used to put out a list of toys, a guide for toys, went out of business. I'm sure you can all imagine who I'm talking about. And suddenly our toy guide was that much more important. And one of the things that people asked us for this last year was to make sure that we included a, li a clickable link on the guide that if somebody liked the toy, they could click and go right to a place where they could purchase the toy. So um, we had many different categories. And the interesting thing is the Discovery Toys won more awards than anybody else. So you can be very proud of that. Uh, I, I think that that's a wonderful, wonderful statement about what you guys are doing. Because I don't think that you woke up in the morning and thought, hey, let's make sure that we make a bunch of toys that are great for kids of different abilities. I don't know, maybe you did. Um, if you did, I would tell you you're doing a good job. Um, and maybe it's just kismet. Because I do think that a well-made toy is perfect for all kids. So uh, I wanted to take a couple of minutes to talk about some of the toys that, that won awards um, from your company, but I'm gonna guess that there are more toys that you guys have that we would think were super awesome. Uh, but let's go through the ones that won and what they won. So your Super Yummy won the Baby Sensory Award. One of the things that we've learned with autism is that um, if we keep kids engaged and keep them learning, even kids who end up being on the autism spectrum, well, let me go back a second. For kids on the autism spectrum, what we find is that there's a period of time in which the traditional way of learning kind of, uh, sometimes it, it, it just slows down, sometimes it stalls completely or doesn't even show up. Um, but what research has been able to show is that the earlier you catch it, you'll hear this all the time with autism, early intervention is key, right? So the earlier you find when a child has stopped progressing and help them to learn in a different way and to progress, then you're not as far behind. So if you have a child that's a year and a half and you begin to see that they are missing skills and you begin to work on those skills, they really aren't that far behind, right? And there are a great deal of thought that says, if we can catch this um, as early as three months or signs of it, then is it possible that these children will never get behind? Um, and I think that that's an interesting idea. So we added a baby category. Even though traditionally people aren't diagnosed with autism when they're babies, we felt that it was important to be providing toys that would be good for any kid, but especially for kids if you're concerned about autism. So this toy, if you, uh, you guys are very familiar with your own toys. I don't need to tell you about your toys, but what I love about it is that there are all those different textures and that the toy can be turned around. It can be held in different ways. It's visually stimulating, but there is that period of time in which babies need to investigate things with their mouths. So there are all those different textures for them to chew on. I would have loved to have had this in my baby bag. And so that was why we gave it the Baby Sensory Award because we just thought it was spectacular. I've never seen anything quite like this um, in terms of having a teething toy. Um, I don't know a single kid that didn't need something at some point to chew on. And this gives them more textures, which is all information for your brain. I absolutely loved it. Uh, okay, then um, we, one of the things we did was we, we test drove toys. We had kids come in and play with them. It was full on may mayhem, but we also had therapists come in and say, what do you love and why do you love it? So your triangle won our baby therapy award, which was awarded by therapists working in the field of autism of ABA. Um, and what they particularly loved about this toy was how versatile it is that you could turn it like there's a building component to it that um, for kids who are already into that kind of thing that they can turn the triangle around in many different ways that could be laid flat um, that they could use it in so many different ways and that each one of the sides that you had a whole different set of lessons on them different colors different textures 
different things that you could do with them. And they were particularly jazzed about this toy because they were looking at it and saying, oh my gosh, look at all the lessons that we can do with this. Um, that they could work on colors, that they could work on shapes, uh, that they could work on cause and effect things with it. They were really, really happy. And I have to say that um, the babies that we had that came in to test drive, and we lined up all these toys and, and we watched for over an hour to see what were they attracted to, what did they fight over, what did everybody want to get in line to play with, and all the babies fought over this toy. Um, we had some tears shed because we were trying to practice sharing, which by the way is a social skill, but this was the toy that they wanted to play with. It's got great colors. Uh, it's one of those toys that, as I was saying, it feels good in your hands. It's smooth and fabulous and um, so versatile. So this won our Baby Therapist Award. And again, the therapist absolutely loved it. Okay, now I could go, I could talk about a pegboard forever. I, one of the first toys that therapists told us to go get for our son when he was starting ABA therapy was a pegboard. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I had never... I mean, I guess maybe walking through an educational store, I had seen a pegboard, but I didn't know what it was for. I'd never played with one before. I had no idea what you could do with a pegboard. And but I bought it because it was on the required list. And I was like, well, this is ridiculous. This, what, you know, this thing with holes in it, what do you do with this? And then as I watched our therapist work with my son, my son learned his colors. He learned to count. Um, he social, one of the things, the first things that they did, but when he had, you know, no skills at all was that they set pegs up into it and had him using his, um, pincer grasp to grab the pegs and put them in the board. So they were helping him to do early developmental things that would help him to eventually write. And they would have him put the pegs in and then they would sing happy birthday and pretend that the pegs were candles and he had to blow the candles out. So right there, he's working on the pincer grasp to, and he's working on push and pull and all these other uh, fine motor things and even some gross motor to put it in. Then they made believe that it was a cake, which works on creativity and then worked on blowing, which helped him because when kids get behind in speech, they don't develop the oral motor um, muscles, which make it harder when they do learn to speak because they're behind and their diction is bad. So all of those things just in one little birthday cake, cake thing. Well, you guys took the pegboard and you put it on steroids because you've added more shapes to it, more colors to it, and you added the sensory component of you've got the little shaker ones as well. So the list of things that I could have a therapist work on with your pegboard is off the chart. This is a superlative toy um, and really should be a part of any uh, young child with autism's home um, and part of their program. So that's why it got the toddler board game. I know it's not technically a board game, but the truth is you can use it as a board game. They played checkers on one of these with my son. Um, and they took, they learned uh, taking turns on this. I love a good pegboard. And I got to be honest, you guys have the best one that I've ever seen. So kudos for that. Okay. Another thing that I love, uh, this one, the Toddler Sensory Award, your tangible. Uh, we also like the name of it. We think it's cute. Um, but what I love about the ball is the bumps. Um, this is a sensory component for kids that it's more enjoyable, but it's also easier to grasp. One of the, um, one of the things that they're learning about autism is that there's no such thing as autism. There's autisms. Uh, that there are different hallmarks for different kids and they're starting to phenotype the different types of autism. And this is really beginning early stages that they're doing this, but they're seeing that there are some kids that um, get stuck on a certain skill. And for instance, one of the types of autism is the type that my son has, which are kids that their um, ability to track something with their eyes, it, it's harder for them. And if you think about it, think about all the different skills that that would make difficult. And there's a little bit of um, hand-eye coordination that comes with this particular type of autism that things are a little bit rougher. So these kids tend to be a little clumsier. 
They can have the potential to have a harder time to learn how to read. Um, they don't do well at catching a ball. They don't do well with tying their shoes. They find riding a bike later on a really hard skill to do. Um, and their handwriting is usually not great. Um, and anything that involves hand-eye coordination, they're just a little clumsy. Well, they've started to realize that um, when they're teaching a child to catch a ball, there's a certain point when the parents get frustrated and they go, well, he's just not going to be good at that. So let's stop that. Let, you know, we're not going to worry about it. He's not going to be a baseball player. Let's work on other things that he's better at, right? That would have been me as a parent. My kid couldn't catch a ball. He, he just couldn't, he couldn't see it coming at him. And we said, forget it, move on. Um, but what they've learned is that if you skip that skill, that it is harder for them to tie their shoes because the skill of being able to track a ball and then catch it in your hands actually helps. It's a prerequisite for learning all those other things, including the handwriting and the riding the bike. Isn't that crazy? Um, and this is something they didn't know even five years ago. But what they've learned is that if you go back to catching the ball and work a little bit longer on that skill and master that skill, then everything that comes after comes a little easier. So getting the right ball and getting a ball that's easier to catch and that's more rewarding to catch and that the kids like becomes a pivotal, pivotal thing. So that's why I love your Tangiball. That's why it won the Toddler Sensory Award and that's why I get excited whenever I see it because it's super awesome. Uh, I'm just breezing through these. So hopefully uh, you guys are gonna have questions for me at the end. Uh, okay, our favorite of all of your toys was this one. Uh, this one, the Toddler Top Toy Award. It's your Castle Marble Works. Um, in the field of ABA, we're always looking for cause and effect toys for kids um, that are really reinforcing, that really make them happy, that have a beginning, middle, and end to them that's, that can be accomplished in less than, say, two minutes. Because when they do lessons with the kids, they'll sit down and they'll, they'll work on something and they'll incorporate it in play or whatever, but then the kids get to take a break. And they, we want the break to be really um, exciting for the kids. So um, a lot of times they'll start out by doing what they call a preference assessment and they'll say, what do you want? What do you want to play when we're done? And um, so for a marble work, any kind of a marble run, um, kids love them. <laughs> they just love them. You can put it together. There's that building component to it, right? But it's really fun to watch the ball go down. Everybody loves that, right? So a lot of times they'll ask kids, do you want to play the marble run or do you want to play this or do you want to do that? And, you know, the marble one run wins a lot of the time. And it's a, the therapists love it because what you do is you say to the child, okay, we're just going to do this first. We're going to work on this lesson. And as soon as we do this, and that lesson may take two minutes, but as soon as we do that, you win the ball and you get to put it down the, the marble run. And so the kids want to do well in whatever it is that they're working on. They win the ball, they get to go over to the castle. It's very exciting, everybody's revved about it. They put the ball down, the ball comes down, everybody goes, yay, and then we go back to work. Imagine how much harder it is when if you've got a toy that doesn't have a beginning, middle, and end to it. So you say to the child, here are the things that you can choose from, and they choose the stuffed animal. And they take the stuffed animal, and now we have to go back to work. Nobody wants to take the stuffed animal away from the toy, right? That's why you really want a toy with a beginning, middle, and end. Um, because it's just got a natural beginning and end to it. Like, yay, you did the marble run, and now the therapist has the ball again, and we go back to work. And nobody feels like, hey, wait a second, I want my toy back, right? <laughs> it just helps supercharged therapy and and you guys you know this marble run is super fabulous awesome because first of all it goes together better um this this is a, a toy that's going to grow a little bit with a child in the beginning they're just going to want to put the ball down later on they're going to want to construct it and do different things it's awesome because it's got the the little drawbridge we all love that but i don't know can you guess what our favorite thing about this toy was um, your balls jingle. <laughs> and I'm sorry, like that, that sounds like the most ridiculous thing to get excited about, but it does make it more exciting for the kids. And even we as the adults loved it. 
Um, they have that jingle element to it. It rocked our world. Uh, can you tell I get excited about toys? Is, is it just uh, annoying? I'm sorry. Uh, but anyway, so love this. There's so many aspects to it. I love, a lot of times you see a marble run and it's two colors, right? I love that this is primary colors and I've got all these different colors because I can work on colors with the child as we're building. Um, I, can, I can work on getting them to vocalize, um, you know, and say, which color do you want? And then we give them that color and they build with it. There's so many wonderful aspects. It's a fabulous marble run. And it stores easier than most marble runs do. So kudos to that because that does make a difference for a parent. Okay, another good one. Um, <laughs> this was a toy. This was like, a, a, you know, very stealthy toy. When we had all the, the kids, this won the preschool parent award. We had all the kids come in to play with the toys and, and everything was taken out of the boxes and set up there for the kids to play with. And all of the kids walked by this toy. Uh, nobody went over and went, hey, I wanna play with the bug toy, no one. Um, but when, you know, I sat there and I started playing with it, I was like, Oh, I love the bug toy because the bug game, because it was super flexible, super sensory, fabulous. Cause the bugs have a really good feel to them. They're all in different colors. I can do matching with them. Um, and then you already have the lessons on the cards. So I sat there you know, the kids were in the room. I sat there and I started to play. And first one kid came over and said, hey, what are you doing? It looks really cool. And I said, oh, come on over. And we figured it out together, you know, oh, this one, you have to find five of the dragonfly uh, bugs and put them on the thing. Well, they were so excited. And looking at the bugs going, this one's not the dragonfly. Oh, look, they're all different colored dragonflies and matching them up to the, the thing. And then suddenly every kid in the room was there and said, can I go next? Can I play this next? And the parents in the room went nuts because they were like, Okay, <laughs> there are places where you can work on addition and subtraction and the lessons get gradually harder. And, and one of the moms said, I have never seen my child be so excited to work on something that is clearly educational. And I thought, well, that's a good toy. <laughs> you know, that's, that's the answer to that. Um, so this is a super fabulous toy. I love that... Um, there's patterning in it so that kids have, you know, it starts a pattern and they have to figure out which bug would be next in the pattern. That's coding. That is the beginning of coding. That's what all of our kids need to be learning, all of them. So I super fabulous, love this. I thought this was a great gift. And um, the parents literally lost their minds. What was interesting about it was though that it, this is one of those toys that would easily be overlooked. Um, so I would, I would say that when you guys are talking about this toy, uh, get it out, play with this toy and get the parents playing with the toy because then they will lose their minds. But when, when it was just laying out, nobody, nobody, nobody was taking a look at it and they should have. It's super fabulous. Okay. Um, and then the preschool therapist award, boy, the therapists were th really thrilled with your tactile sand, with all the things that came with it, with the way it was packaged, the way the sand held, it's got a real sensory, um, element to it that there are, there are some kids who just, well, they have sensory issues. And so they're not going to play you. You know, I come from the era where you, you got a bucket of water and, and a bucket of, dirt and you made mud, right? <laughs> Kids just don't play like that anymore. Uh, and people's yards aren't set up for that anymore. And then of course we moved to Play-Doh and some kids, there is the thing about Play-Doh, some kids love it, other kids just can't handle it. But the tactile sand, it's got an entirely different feel to it. And, and the fact that you can very easily, you know what, Honestly, as I'm talking about it, I think one of the things that's really awesome about it is that some of our kids don't have the hand strength that's required for Play-Doh and the tactile sand, they absolutely can do it. And it feels, I don't know, it just feels different. Um, 
I don't know if you know who Temple Grandin is, Dr. Temple Grandin, but she's probably one of the most famous people with autism. Um, HBO made a movie about her. Um, she would love your tactile sand. She's a friend of mine and she would absolutely love your tactile sand. It's got a feel to it that's just super fabulous. And again, the way it's packaged and the things that it, it doesn't come with too many tools so that you're, you know, picking tools up everywhere. Um, but it comes with just enough tools that you can fit into the bucket and the bucket seals well. It's got a good feel to it. It's, it's great. So the therapist loved it and said, they would play with it. And for a therapist to say that they would play with something that has the potential to be messy, at, you're doing something right when you do that. Okay, moving on. Um, then we got into the, um, the adults. Um, and this toy, the Pentagrams won our Adult Oldie But Goodie Award. Um, and it was, a, I gotta be honest, it was a little bit of a stretch for it to be an oldie but a goodie because, um, you know, I didn't have one of these when I was a kid. But the element of it we felt was something that harkened back to some um, older, more nostalgic toys. And we loved um, how the adults were using this toy because it was so versatile. Uh, and again, you know, especially when you get into the adult years, uh, autism looks so different for so many people. You might have a person who um, is an adult on the autism spectrum who works at Disney uh, uh, as an Imagineer person who does, um, uh, you know, the very fine background work um, for cartoons. Um, and that kind of a person needs something that is relaxing, something that they can put in their hands that helps to, you know, work the kinks out of, uh, of doing that kind of illustration and, you know, that they loved this kind of a thing. And then you might have somebody who's on the autism spectrum as an adult who doesn't have language to be able to communicate and has a lot of sensory needs. Um, and we found that pretty much anybody on the spectrum that we set this down and they played with it in different ways, but that they loved it. Um, and that it was very interesting, the shapes that they would make, because um, it can be a building toy or it can be, you know, almost one of those fidget toys um, that you're turning something around and holding just one piece of it. Um, so we thought it was a very interesting toy and a great gift to give somebody who um, is on the spectrum, no matter what their, you know, particular um, element of effectiveness is. So we were, we were super charged with this. And then of course, everybody loved this. Everybody loved this. In a, in a, the last couple of years, you know, we've seen those fidget spinners um, that a lot of people hold. And it's not that I have anything against the fidget spinners, but um, at a certain point, uh, unless you're going to get really good at the tricks, there's only so much you can do with a fidget spinner, right? Um, and there isn't a part of it that involves other parts of the brain. It's not, you're, you're not going to build a skill other than the fine motor. And what we loved about Tricky Fingers is that it was about motor planning, but about cognitive planning. Sometimes it could be about memory. Um, that people like to use it by themselves or to race with other people. So there could be a social element to it. Um, that for a younger kid, you could work on colors with it and you could work on patterning with it. But um, for older kids, like the teens love this toy um, and they were racing with it. But for adults, that it could be a solitary toy, something that was meditative and relaxing, but also um, does work on that fine motor. It took a little bit of skill to be able to move the balls around to get them into the place where they were going to be. And, and it took planning. So we love that cognitive element of it. The therapists uh, really super loved this toy. And then I think this is the last one, the Adult Sensory Award. Um, we found that uh, people that really got into this toy, uh, I almost, I, like, I love calling something a toy, but this had a bigger element to it than it was a toy. It became um, 
something that really relaxed and focused people. For individuals who are on the autism spectrum who have a lot of sensory things going on, um, sometimes it's everything it just bombards them and it's so overwhelming and to have an opportunity to focus on just one thing um, is so relaxing for them. And, and to get them to focus on one thing and sort of, you know, close out all that other noise that hits them all the time, it's really a gift for them. And we found that the people who got into this, uh, there was one young woman on the autism spectrum in particular who, um, she has a lot of uh, what we call self-stimulatory behaviors where, you know, she'll hand flap and she'll rock. And it's her way of regulating herself to be in the world and deal with all the things that are bombarding her. And she sat down and played with this. And I mean, for like an hour and a half, she was at peace and so enjoyed it and was really enjoying the creative aspect of, you know, a couple of puzzles that she did to match that were in the book. And then once she understood how the pieces went together, then started creating her own masterpieces. And it was really lovely to see, and it was lovely to see the peace that she had. I, I, I just keep wanting to say that it was almost like a meditative practice. Um, and her mom was thrilled. She was like, man, I didn't know that a toy could do this for her. So um, that's one of the many reasons why we gave it the Adult Sensory Award, because something about the practice of putting the pieces in um, and the part of the brain that that occupied allowed the other stuff to kind of dial down. And if you know people that are in the autism spectrum that have sensory stuff, that's a big, big deal. So those are the toys that we chose and that we said these are spectacular. Um, it was really uh, a joy for us to be able to uh, demo your toys and to have other individuals try them out and to see the joy that they brought. You should know too that you guys donated a bunch of toys and that we, we hold a Sensory Santa event every year and um, it's free. It's at a sensory gym and we welcomed hundreds of children and teens and adults and they came and everybody who came got a toy and they were thrilled, uh, just thrilled with the toys that you guys donated. And it was really um, a wonderful, wonderful event that you guys were very much a part of. So I wanna thank you for that. And um, I wanna thank you for the great work that you're doing. These are amazing toys. And they have the ability to open up worlds for people that um, are of all abilities. And that's something you should be really proud of. So uh, what would you like to ask me? And you can ask me anything. <laughs> Do anybody have any questions? Yeah, if you guys want to go ahead, you want you want to take yourself off a uh, screen share so that way you're front and center now. Sure. Um, How do I do that? You, I've never done that with somebody else being. Do I give you back control? Um, no, no. It should say stop screen share at the top of your screen. Ah, there we go. There you go. Oh, yay. yay! Okay, so you guys have any questions at all for um, for Shannon? Go ahead and type them into chat. Um, Jim, Jim, I believe Jerry may be on as well. Um, you guys can come off mute if you guys have any questions. Uh, Jim has said, I liked all the info about ball play. Um, is there any study we can go for more information? The, the study that I was referring to is about to be published. So I'm sort of giving you insider information, but it's about to be published. And when that is published, of course, I cannot remember the name of the publication, but when it's published, what I can do is share that with your team to then share with you. Perfect. Um, Gail says, thanks so much for the great information on all the toys. It's great to know why some of them were chosen. Uh, Ruth says, uh, thanks for all the info we can share with our customers. Absolutely. Yeah. And you can always refer to the guide. Um, the, the guide until next November will live on our website. Um, and when you go to the website, right on the very first page at the top, there's a little icon that says toy guide. So the website is autism-live.com. 
and the toy, the toy guide icon is there. You click on it and it takes you right to the toy guide. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Penny says, uh, so many great words to use with our customers. Uh, can you repeat what ABA stands for again? Yeah, so ABA stands for Applied Behavior Analysis. It's considered the gold standard of treatment for autism. It is what insurance companies now pay for for therapy for autism. It is the only autism treatment that is paid for by insurance. Perfect. Um, Terry says, thank you so, uh, so much. Your suggestions on how um, else we can use the toys. Um, so that's perfect. Um, Rhonda says, I loved all the information you gave us. I would absolutely love a copy of the presentation. We will be uh, providing um, a link to the actual uh, video. Tomorrow I'll be posting this um, so you guys will have access to that. I don't know, Shannon, if you'll be um, sending your actual presentation. I absolutely can. Perfect. Well, then I can absolutely um, link to that as well. And so, somebody so asked, I saw somebody asked, can we say ABA approved? And, and, you know, I don't get to speak for the ABA community. So I think you could get yourself into trouble for that. But you can say Autism Live approved, um, and you can absolutely say that. And you guys have, there are toy, there are badges um, for each toy that you can use online or use however you want that say that you're, the toy won an award from Autism Live. Perfect. So Sarita says, um, I'm new. Um, how, do you, how do you know if a person is autistic? She's never had any experience. It's a great question. And the truth is you really probably wouldn't, um, but you will see um, lots of different um, behaviors uh, that might lead you to go, oh, that person could be on the autism spectrum, but there are very specific people who diagnose autism, right? So none of us, including myself, are qualified to do that. But some of the things that you will see in small children is that they will um, do those repetitive behaviors that I was talking about, like flap their hands. Um, sometimes, uh, it's so funny because there's so many different aspects to autism. Um, sometimes, well, certainly with children, you will see a delay in speech. Sometimes that means that they are not verbal at all. Other times it, it can mean that they're having a harder time communicating, but they do have some words. They just aren't where they should be for their age range. Um, as kids get older and as they get therapy, it all gets a little bit different, right? Because therapy, the ABA therapy is very effective at helping children if they get the right intensity. Um, but with people on the autism spectrum frequently have sensory issues. And that means that for one person, they may find being in intense fluorescent lights like so horrible that they would have a meltdown over it. I, I know a wonderful college professor who is on the autism spectrum. He's an international speaker. He teaches uh, music at Adelphi College. And um, he's an amazing man. He just has a really hard time. If there are lights over his head, he has a hard time focusing. So he, when he was hired to teach college, he said, hey, are you gonna, is it gonna bother you if I wear a baseball cap while I teach? And that baseball cap just you know, covers enough that he's fine. But if you made him take off his baseball hat, he would, he, it would just be miserable for him. So other sensory issues, some people can't stand uh, the dark which is the complete opposite, right? We have kids who will go into museums and if there's a dark space, they feel like it's a hole and they're gonna, they're gonna fall into it and they can't stand to be in some place that's dark. Um, noises can be bothersome for them or it can be something that they constantly wanna hear. So um, it, it is a huge spectrum of people. It's really hard to pigeonhole. Um, but I think for you guys, you know, I wouldn't assume anything. Um, and, and I, I would, if a parent says to you, Hey, I'm really, my child is on the spectrum and I'm really looking for toys that will help with that. Then you go, Hey, it just so happens, um, that we, you know, autism live is the, the most watched program about autism. And you can say the most popular show about autism thinks we're great and has recommended these toys. You could absolutely say that. 
but I don't think it's something that you should ever assume. And the other thing I will say, since we're talking so frankly about it, is that um, a lot of times people have a misconception that people on the autism spectrum um, have a low IQ. And that is almost always incorrect. So if there's one thing to assume, um, I would tell you to always assume intelligence. Even people who don't have the ability to use words to communicate are often off the chart brilliant. So always assume intelligence, but otherwise assume nothing else. <laughs> Does that make sense? That's fabulous. Um, Crystal had said, thank you for all the information. I work in a high school in an autism room. So I work with about 15 kids who are very low on the spectrum. So thank you for all the great information. I hope you've tried some of your toys with them. Absolutely. Like get those pentagrams in there. Uh, Melanie says, uh, not a question, but a comment. I'm a school-based SLP and use busy bugs in my classroom frequently. One of my, uh, my students who happens to be on the autism spectrum enthusiastically um, shared with me that the bugs are anatomically, I can never Anatomically say, correct. Anatomically, yes. there we go, yes. correct. That was one of the things we loved about it too. They're um, anatomically correct. Yes. Yes. So such, such a bonus for kiddos who are so detail oriented. That is Yes, awesome. uh, yeah, absolutely. And then Crystal also says, everybody has a little bit of autism in them. That's what my coworkers and I say about our autism room. I tend to think that too. Uh, and, you know, if you look at the criteria of what gets you an autism diagnosis, I think all of us have at least one of the things on the list, but you only get the diagnosis if you have a certain number of them. So. That's great. Um, Plunderwood said, is a child with autism equal chron um, chronological age versus developmental age? You know, because they're all different, um, it's possible. It's absolutely possible for a child on the autism spectrum to be chronologically the same age developmentally as their peers. A, a lot of times with small children, we see that they are behind um, because for whatever happens um, in, in the brain, um, they get caught up in that and not on the path of learning the way the other kids do. We know, for instance, that, um, kids on the spectrum are more thing oriented than face oriented. So they're not as interested in making eye contact. They're not as interested in looking at your face to see whether you're smiling or laughing at them. They're more about the thing, which does mean that um, toys can be very, uh, we use the term reinforcing, that they really like them. But one of the other things about kids on the spectrum is that sometimes they don't get toys. And, and I mean, get them as in understand them, not that they're not given to them, but they don't understand it. They think it's work. Um, which if you think about it, you know, like my son loves to play or used to love to play Angry Birds. Mm -hmm. And it's not my game. To me, I'm like, oh, this is just so much work. I like, I don't want to play this. I'm happier to play something else. I do love to play games on my phone, but Angry Birds is not my thing. And it feels like work to me, right? So it's the same way with kids on the autism spectrum. They need to be shown toys. They need to be shown how to play with them. They need to be shown how they can manipulate them um, so that they learn how much fun toys are. And boy, that when you can share that um, with a kiddo and share the flexibility of playing with a bunch of toys on the autism spectrum, that's a, a big deal. Um, super fun. But going back to your question about are they chronologically and developmentally the same age, it really depends case by case. But a lot of what we see with young autism is that they're behind and we're trying to catch them up and toys can help us to do that. Absolutely. I think the, the best thing, and I know Jim could probably repeat this, is really asking the parent, you know, and talking to them versus just assuming. Yeah. You know, um, yeah, just because everybody is so individual. Absolutely. So any more questions, comments, you guys? This has been a uh, fascinating hour. <laughs> Yeah, thank you, Shannon. That was wonderful. Everything was, was spot on and very pertinent to what we're doing. So we appreciate your time and 
and your passion for Discovery Toys because we all share that same passion. So um, everything was really relevant to us. So thank you very much. Yes. Well, thank you. I do think that a good toy can change a child's life. And, and I think that's all children. Um, and it's going to make me emotional for a second, but I know for a fact that good toys help change my son's life. And, and we're able to teach him things that we couldn't have taught him otherwise. So, you know, um, it, I, this is a real opportunity for you guys. You're changing the world by giving kids an opportunity to learn something and make it fun. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a big deal. Well, I thank you. Yeah, our tagline is teach, play, inspire. So, I mean, that's, that's our whole mission right there. So. Yeah. Okay, well, everybody is just saying thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. Interesting. So I want to thank you again, uh, Shannon, for joining us. It is, like I said, it's been a fascinating hour, even for myself, just <laughs> listening to everything about about um, our toys and just making them come alive. So, um, Jim, is there anything you want to um, tag in? Did no, that, 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 was, uh, that was incredible, Shannon. Thank you so much. Uh, so much rich information and uh, reinforcement uh, for us and, and uh, much appreciated and um, thank you for taking the time to join us and share this information and, and well, share part of, part of you and your life. It uh, is wonderful. Thank you guys. And I, I know that, you know, um, if life is as it always is, uh, now that we've talked about this in a way, so many of you already are, are, have individuals with autism in your lives and in your classrooms. Um, and now you're going to notice a bunch more and, um, and they're amazing people and amazing kids. And I'm just happy that you guys are making toys that are great for them too. So thank you so much for allowing me to be here with you. Awesome. Well, have a great night, everyone. We'll have this posted tomorrow morning. First thing. So and we'll talk to you soon. Bye everyone. Bye. Thanks everyone. Thank you again, Shannon. Right, can I? Right, can I?